All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Foundry. Hey, if you are joining us here in our parking lot, you can tune in on your car radio to 88.5 FM, and then you'll be able to hear us in your car radio. Again, that's 88.5 FM if you want to tune to your car radio. Um, those of you who are joining us online, we also want to welcome you. Thank you for being able to uh, be at this service with us um, and uh, celebrating during this time of Lent. Looking forward to celebrating the uh, Resurrection Sunday that's coming up pretty soon here, um, just another uh, couple of weeks. Uh, today, uh, we're talking about restoration, um, this idea that God is our restorer. He, he, he builds us back together to what we were supposed to be um, as individuals and as a community. And so our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 23, uh, the first three verses. A very famous psalm. Uh, A lot of us are probably very familiar with it. But this is how it goes. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Lord, we are so thankful for all that you've done for us. We're thankful that you do guide us and lead us and that you restore our souls. And Lord, we're thankful that after that, you you lead us on paths of righteousness. And Lord, we want to live up to that and we want to honor that. Uh, We want to be renewed and restored to the image that you created us in, your own image. And we want to be able to follow um, those paths of righteousness that you've laid out for us. So we ask that you be with us not only today, but as we finish this season of Lent over these next two weeks, um, and as we go forward into the future, that that our new attitudes and our new minds and our new hearts um, could be focused on you and following your paths and your ways. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's sing together. A tale silent, surely it was true. But since when has impossible I ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment was Sunday's empty tomb. But since when has impossible I ever stopped you? Oh, this is the sound of drop bones rattling. Is the slaves that come dead now again? Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Cause this is the sound of dry bones rattling. Oh, Pentecost of fire, stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. And resurrection power runs in my veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again But this is the sound of dry bones that I leave My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore See 
is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live. Open the grave, open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna open the grave. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Cause this is the sound of dry bones rattling. Amen. We serve a God who is able to restore and redeem and heal anything he wants to. And so we can reach out to him for help. We can ask him for his mercy. And we know that he is faithful to give. Well, I was hopeless. I knew I was lost. Death and darkness were my only song. I needed someone to come rescue me. Then mercy heard my plea. The Lord you found me, you healed me, you called me from the grave. You gave me a real love, I thank you, Jesus. You washed my sin. Oh, now I'm living like I'm forgiven. You came and set me free. That's what your mercy did for me. You gave me beauty for my guilty state. And now I'm living day to day by your grace. So excuse me if I can't. Take my praise Cause I know That I've been saved Lord, you found me You healed me You called me from the grave And you gave me your real love I thank you, Jesus You washed my sins away And oh, now I'm living Like I'm forgiven You came and set me free your mercy did for me, and if we mercy will restore me, I will proclaim, and even if the world may fall before me. I'm living like I'm forgiven. You came and set me free. That's what your mercy did for me. Oh, that's what your mercy did for me. Thank you, Lord. That's what your mercy did for me. I'm so glad. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God who was able to walk on water and perform miracles. And you know what? He's that same God. He's that same powerful, loving God. And we want to lift him up for all of the amazing things that he's been willing to do for us. Lord, we thank you so much for your presence, for your mercy, for your restoration, Lord, in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, and in our community. Be with us today, Lord. Come and be here with us with your amazing presence. Yeah. 
You're the one who walked on water, and you calm the raging seas. You command the highest mountains to fall upon their knees. You're the one who welcomes sinners, and you open blinded eyes. You restore the brokenhearted, and you brought the dead to life. Forgetting all our sins, you remember all oh, your promises. You are amazing, more than amazing, forever. With authority you've spoken, and you set the captive free. You're the king who came to serve, and you're the God who washed our feet. You're the one who took our burdens, and you bled upon the cross. In your kindness and your mercy, you became the way for us. Forgetting all our sins, you remember all your promises. You are amazing, more than amazing, forever. continue with our service, we're going to move into our time of uh, meditations for Lent. And again, Lent is just this season as we are getting ready to celebrate resurrection, just coming up in two weeks here. Um, and we're talking about restoration today. And this first verse is about being able to return to God for that restoration, that he is willing to accept us and forgive. And it says, Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your hearts, with fasting, with weeping and with sorrow. Tear your hearts, not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, 
for he is merciful and compassionate, very patient, full of faithful love, and ready to forgive. So we start our time remembering that God is willing to take us, that he loves us so deeply. that he's willing to restore that relationship between us and him. We just need to turn our hearts to him. And in our second verse, it speaks to the health of our minds. That in Christ we are newly created with a new mind that can be transformed by the will of God. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So we want to lift up our minds to the Lord that he could restore them to be able to fit into his good and perfect and pleasing will. And not only is it our minds, it's our whole selves. In Colossians we read, you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. So Lord, we want to turn over our whole beings, not just our minds, but everything that we are. We want to hand it over to you. We want to be restored in your mercy. We want to be restored by your grace. We want our relationships with you to be restored. And we want to have our relationships with each other restored. And you know, even our relationships with ourselves, Lord, we can get so bogged down and confused and depressed and anxious and frustrated with ourselves. But when you see us, you love us and you know us. We are truly seen and known and loved by you. Help us live in that truth. Help us be renewed and restored in your image. finally we hear from James how we ought to treat each other. It says you do well when you fulfill the scripture, the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. We want to lift up our relationships and our attitudes that they may be God honoring and God pleasing that they may be restored in the way that they were intended to be, where we show love for each other, a generous love that's willing to put others before ourselves. Lord, we want all these things. We want to be in your presence. And we want to dive in. We want to be fully committed, Lord. We want you to take every part of these hearts and minds and souls that we have. 
and transform it back into the image that you wanted it to be created in your image, Lord. Help us to fully commit and dive all into your love. I just want to be close to your heart. This is where my healing finds its star. Here is where I find my peace, where my soul is finally free. I'm going all in in over my head i'm not scared to get drenched in your love wherever you go god i will follow i'm not scared to get lost in your love i don't have to see where this road is just as long as my hands in your hand here is where i want to stay held within your sweet embrace and i'm going on Trust you, Father. Where my every fear has to surrender, I will trust in you forever. Take me there. Oh, take me there. Cause your power's found in the roughest waters. Where I have no choice but to trust you, Father. Where my every fear has to surrender I will trust in you forever Take me there Oh, take me there I'm going all in Get over my head I'm not scared to get drenched in your love Wherever song i love that lyric where it talks about i'm not scared to be drenched in your love and i think there's something powerful in that where there's so much that it can overwhelm us but it's not bad to be overwhelmed by the love of god we just pray that that love may be poured out today in your hearts as 
we grow closer to him this morning. Father, we thank you for this beautiful time where we can come together as one body and proclaim, Father, that your love is powerful, powerful than any brokenness in this world. It heals, it reconciles, it restores, makes people one. Father, we pray that as we continue to dive into your kingdom, Lord God, I pray that you teach us more about this truth that we believe that we belong into one body, Lord, and that we may learn how to do that practically in our lives. So we pray that you guide us today, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, good morning, and thank you for those who are viewing us online. And just want to welcome you to the first day of spring. Woohoo! How many of you are excited for spring? And what a good way to start spring with this beautiful weather that God has given us today. Uh, we get to continue to talk about what this kingdom of God looks like as we are called to be these kingdom builders. And we will look into specifically what that process looks like in the kingdom of God. Now, when we talk about the process, Isaac mentioned in the beginning, there, it, there's this restorative process. And this process has a horizontal process and a, verti- a horizontal process and a vertical process. Now, there's no doubt that in this process of restoration, we cannot deny the amazing process of God restoring us into a peaceful relationship with Him. And not only that, it's not just I'm in the kingdom of God and it's over, but we see then furthermore that process as we are restored into the image of God, right? And that's something that we believe everyone is in the business of. But apart from that process of restoration that goes on vertically, there's one that goes alongside of that, and it's horizontally. There's also this process of continuing to build this oneness in the kingdom of God with my brothers and sisters and with this world. Now, it gets complicated because the world that we live in has created so many layers of insider and outsider. There's way too many layers of insider, outsider that has structured our life where we can in one day go from feeling exceptional and accepted And in that same day, we can feel painfully excluded and devalued because there are so many that we go through in one day. Now, there's no need to go into detail and the endless areas that we might see this in the news or that we might see this with our own eyes. But I'll try to pick one example that hopefully won't offend you too much because I want you to keep on listening. (laughs) But take, for example, shopping, right? Everyone likes shopping. But let me tell you the layers that you can also find in that just, you know, simple and uh, unharmful in some ways, right, Uh, the act of shopping. You can sit in a group of people where everyone in that group except for yourself um, shares about their great experience shopping in uh, stores like Gucci and Prada and never heard of Goodwill. You, I assure you, will automatically feel excluded and uh, probably out of place. Or you can sit in the same group of people where everyone shares their ad- just their great adventures and findings um, in, in thrift stores, right? Because you yourself have a few stories to share about that and you feel included. Now, I'm not saying that one group is better than the other group, but it can easily go down that road if we are not intentional in creating and living for something bigger than just me, than just self. Now, these layers of insider and outsider in our society can extend into more serious topics such as sexuality, such as race, such as sports, such as memberships. I have memberships here. You don't have memberships there. Education, neighborhood, citizenship, and the list can go on. And those topics can clearly delineate who is inside and who is outside. 
And if we are not careful, we can s easily slip down the road where we tell ourselves one group is better than the other. Citizenship was one hot topic when we, when we read the book of Ephesians, our text for today in chapter 2. There were many layers of insider and outsider between Jews and Gentiles. For the Jews living in this dominant uh, secular and Roman empire, the Jews who in the sight of the world um, had these strange customs, right? In, in the sight of these Gentiles, these Jews had some very weird customs, um, some very weird dietary rules, um, strict adherence to the Torah, the law, so much that they almost took pride in that and created this exclusivity where, you know, we live by this and hence we are better than you. And then on the other hand, you have these Gentiles who, on the side of the Jews, inside of the Jews, they're just w they have just have way too much tolerance and they are confused with their many gods and are addicted to pleasure and worship of self. And so clearly they're not getting along together. And then you have to add on top of that the dominant Roman presence of that time that followed everyone like a shadow, defying anyone who would disrupt the Roman peace. But it wasn't so much peaceful because that peace came with intimidation of their military power. So it was to our best interest not to create any trouble within the Roman Empire. And in the midst of this tense context is where Ephesians comes in and this gospel comes in, this kingdom of God enters and disrupts empires as it offers a very distinct peace that has united both Jews and Gentiles as one body. It's something that no one ever imagined could happen. And here they are, worshiping as one body. Now, it didn't come, this peace that God offers in his kingdom, it didn't come with intimidation, as some empires would try, but through the humiliation of Christ dying on a cross by Roman soldiers. And so this proclamation of peace in God's kingdom cannot be compared to the Roman peace because first and foremost, it gives us peace with the one true Lord, one true king that is ruler of this world. And second of all, it defies and is far superior um, as it defies these social structures and these barriers of hatred and the many layers of inside and outside that our world has created. So listen to what Ephesians chapter 2 verses 11 through 22 says. And it's a lengthy text, but it has a lot to say about what that means in the kingdom of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 11 through 22, it begins by saying this. So remember that once you were Gentiles by physical descent, descent who were called uncircumcised, by Jews who are physically circumcised. So that was one layer too. You're an insider because you're circumcised and you're an outsider because you're not. And at that time, you were without Christ. You were aliens rather than citizens of Israel and strangers to the covenant of God's promise. In this world, you had no hope and no God. But now, thanks to Christ Jesus, you who once were so far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Christ is our peace. He made both Jews and Gentiles into one group. With his body, he broke down the barrier of hatred that divided us. I like that. I want to say that again. With his body, he broke down the barrier of hatred that divided us. He canceled the detailed rules of the law so that he could create one new person out of the two groups, making peace. He reconciled them both as one body to God by the cross, which ended the hostility to God. When he came, he announced the good news of peace to you who were far away from God and to those who were near. We both have access, we both have access to the Father through Christ by the one Spirit. So now you are no longer strangers and aliens. 
Rather, you are fellow citizens with God's people, and you belong to God's household. As God's household, you are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as a cornerstone. The whole building is joined together in him, and it grows up into a temple that is dedicated to the Lord. Christ is building you, plural, Jews and Gentiles, into a place where God lives through the Spirit. What a powerful scripture. The process of restoration that you see in this place, uh, in this few texts of restoration and reconciliation is exactly that. Kingdom building. But here's the thing. Kingdom building in this aspect is more than just sitting in the same row on a Sunday morning with someone different than you and saying, see, we are at peace. Or see, how I love diversity. I sat right next to a Jew. It's going to require more than that. It's standing by their side when injustice has been served. It's walking on their behalf when their legs have grown tired of marching. It's speaking on their behalf when their words have been muted. It's breaking bread together when bread is scarce and scarce for some and abundant to others. It's repenting when we have found ourselves an accomplice of perpetuating the very barriers of hatred that Christ came to tear down through his death and resurrection. It's going to require more. This is what makes us one body in Christ. Not that I made it through Sunday worship with my neighbor without fighting, though that's always a good thing. But there's going to be a lot of restorative and reconciling work within the kingdom of God. And we have to be willing to do that. But belonging in the kingdom of God is absolutely a very good starting point as we have peace with God. But the peace that God is calling us to build with one another, that's where the work and the building needs to start picking up. How we live it out is up to you and me. And the willingness to be vulnerable by being led by the Spirit in a continued pro process of repentance and restoration. Repentance and restoration. It's been quite some time uh, for me now living in this kingdom of God. But I still find myself, to be honest, unlearning and repenting from some of those barriers of hatred that have either been conditioned um, on me or I have built myself because I was hurt by them. I'll give you an example. Um, a while ago, I remember my first experience. Growing up um, Asian in a Latin American country, I always, you know, got teased by my, uh, with you know, how different I was with my eyes and everyone, you know, would, would just make fun of your accent and try and imitate your language. I thought, you know, okay, that's normal. And then I remember going into high school and my first experience of being so devalued and excluded was um, when my girlfriend broke up with me because his father told him that he didn't want her to date Asians. I didn't know it was racism back then until later on, but I was like, wow, okay. So in that moment, it was so easy for me to just build this wall of hatred against, it wasn't just her <laughs> or anything like that. It was just general white people. You know what? I'm done with white people. It took, a, it took some time for me to take that down and say, no, that's not the case with everyone. But this happens not only then, but it happens throughout life where you get hurt by people or, or instead of analyzing and realizing what's going on inside of you, it becomes easier to just point fingers and put the blame on others and say they're the, they're the ones at fault. They're the problems. So I'm going to put a barrier of hatred between me and them. As long as they're gone, we'll be fine. But if they're here... We need to put that wall, and we need to make that wall strong. Yet here we are in this world where 
we cannot escape one another. We cannot live hiding forever. We cannot live in a bubble forever. Here we are brought together as one from different places of the world, brought together as one from different walks of life, brought together as one from different paths and different experience that we may build something together. And this is, this is the part where I really love about the kingdom of God. And I want you to pay attention to this. That we may build something together worthy of calling it a place where God lives. Isn't that amazing? That God calls people from different places, from different walks of life, and says, I'm going, I want you to build something together that is going to be worthy of me calling a place where I will live through the Holy Spirit. That's a big task that we have. That's a big privilege that we have in us. And this is how God becomes our peace. God becomes our peace. God brings people who once were separated by barriers of hatred now stand on God's ground of acceptance and love. God is the one that defines peace for us and not the other way around. See, for a long time, we thought, or we, I think some people still think that I get to define peace for God, or I set my own terms of peace that's convenient only for me. But that's not how kingdom peace works. I, along with others, who may be similar or very different than me, get to build the kingdom of God as we make kingdom peace. As we are led through this process of taking barriers down and repenting and restoring. And repenting and restoring. That we may never raise it again. So now, brothers and sisters, beloved, our faith in action is you asking God to show you those barriers in you. And one by one, start taking them down and then go and stand side by side and then go and lift voices together and then go and journey through hills and valleys because there's lots of them and then go and break bread together and then go <laughs> and repent and restore and here's the important part and then go and repeat and repeat and repeat, however many times it takes. Welcome to God's kingdom. Amen? I hope you stick around. But the kingdom of God, in this process of restoration, in this process of bringing us to God, but bringing us closer to one another, there will be a lot of work. And I pray that we continue to put that work in us through the help of the Holy Spirit that we make this place a place worthy of God living in us and among us. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for inviting us into this place where we can take all differences aside and look at the one thing that does bring us together, and it's the faith that we are under Christ, one one person. Father, I pray, God, that in these times where we see so much division and so many of those barriers of hatred, Lord, so visible sometimes that it even leads to violence when trying to cross over it. Lord God, I pray that you become our peace. Help us how to resemble that peace here in our midst, starting here within our body that we call our own koinonia, our own church, our own fellowship. Heavenly Father, I pray for healing in our hearts. And I pray, Lord God, as you call us to not only look outside, but look inside and see if there are any barriers that we ourselves need to take down. Because it's so much easier to blame others for the faults that we don't want to take care of. Heavenly Father, I pray for mercy for our nation. I pray for mercy for your church. If we haven't been faithful in this aspect of kingdom building, 
God, I pray also for your strength and courage, Lord God, to be different. To not just be satisfied because I went to church with someone different. But to go further and say I stood with them. I walked with them. I spoke on their behalf. I broke bread and I repented and reconciled. Lord God, I pray that you create humbleness in us, that we may continue, Father, to make this place, the kingdom of God, a place worthy of you living in our midst. God with us. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You give life, you are love, you bring a light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, and great are you, Lord, it's your Together that all the earth can shout your praise together. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing great. Are you Lord? All the earth and all the earth will shout your praise. Our heart will cry, these bones will sing great. Are you Lord? It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we.
it's your breath it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only great are you lord great are you And great are you, and great are you, and great are you, Amen, amen. Just a few announcements before we are dismissed. And just a reminder that Easter is just around the corner, and we are excited to celebrate with you this hope that we have of resurrection power and resurrection life and resurrection healing. So we invite you on Sunday, April 4th, to join us here. It will be a bilingual service, and we're excited to celebrate this together with um, in different languages, right? And to resemble and give us a glimpse of what heaven will look like. So don't forget to be here at 10.30 a.m. Second, uh, youth group has started on Wednesdays from 6.30 to 8. So if you have someone in the middle school age or high school age, make sure to sign them up on our website or just come on over and have them uh, spend some quality time with Pastor Michelle and other kids as well. And also, Wednesday, March 31st at 6.30, we have this little seminar, this little conversation that we want to open up to the public where we will talk about self-care in a COVID world. And we have um, Nathan Harris, a licensed therapist, who will come and give us a little insight of what that looks like and some resources and practical tools and maybe something that we can um, create together in support for one another. And lastly, I just want to share a prayer request with you. Um, last Monday, our sister Jane Owens, uh, Rita's mom, passed away and is no longer with us, is in the presence of God. She's dancing with Jesus right now. Um, but just pray for Rita. Just pray for God to be with her in this process of grieving. Um, and just pray for the rest of the family too. And so um, I ask that we as a body will come together and be that support that she needs in these times. So I'm um, praying for her and may she rest in peace. Let me pray before we leave. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the promise of resurrection. Lord God, we look so forward. Whichever comes first, Lord God, your second coming or the day when we will see you face to face. Heavenly Father, you gave us hope. You gave us strength. You gave us this kingdom to help sustain one another. And you gave us the Holy Spirit to keep us together. Lord God, I pray that the communion, Lord God, that you have put in us, the love that you have created through God the Father and the grace that has been granted through Jesus Christ abide richly and fully in us throughout this week. May you bless us and keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hope you have a very blessed week. <laughs>